Paul Bond with Max Gain Systems. Today we're going to be looking into the DIY shallow water anchors. Now, what we're going to have to do here is first go into what exactly is a shallow water anchor. Well, a shallow water anchor is simply just a pole with uh, either a T grip or a tip or something on the end. It makes it real easy to anchor your boat. You just take this pole and you jam it into the ground and you tie off your boat to that particular pole. Now, why would you use fiberglass right here over other materials. Well, first off, fiberglass itself is springy. It absorbs shocks caused by wake and wind. The fiberglass also resists UV deterioration, so it's highly UV stabilized as much as we can get it and maintain its integrity. Um, it's very lightweight for, what it, for exactly how strong it is, so it makes it very easy to use and operate. Um, it's available also in several colors. We've got this available in a black, white, and camo as of this date. And the camo is actually a muddy water camo. It's a very specialized camo. It's great for uh, duck hunters and uh, generalized people who want to be pretty cool, you know what I mean? Well, uh, let's see. Materials not to use. Be sure not to use wooden dowels. And for one thing, wood is just a brittle material and it deteriorates quickly. Uh, also, do not use metal conduit. Uh, for one thing, it rusts, it's extremely heavy, and once it is bent, it stays bent, and it does not spring back like you want it to. Also, do not use PVC. PVC deteriorates quickly in UV. I mean, it just becomes very brittle. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the assembly of these, and first off, and in order to do that, you have to uh, make sure you have all the parts you need to do it. So what we're going to do is go over our parts list here. So first off, what we have here is our stainless steel tip. We've got our stainless rod couplers, both male and female. We've got our polycarbonate T-grip here with optional uh, slot here, this little indention right here. That is actually a slot or a little, a little indention that you can uh, drill through the rod and the T-grip itself. You can put a some sort of screw through there or maybe a rivet if you uh, wanted to pursue that route. It's not necessary if you, if you use the correct adhesives, and we'll, but we'll go over adhesives shortly. Now we also have our four-in-one paddle here. It has uh, these particular ridges here, so you can actually use it to push off of things. You can use it as a push pole to uh, pull around and, and move your boat around, or um, you can use it to push off of logs, all sorts of nasty things you don't want to get entangled in. Uh, we've also got on there, we also have these little uh, hooks right here. Now that's great for use as a lure retriever. You can retrieve your decoys if you're duck hunting. And you also you see these ridges right here? Well, that is actually to uh, increase the strength of this thing. So this thing is actually quite thick. It's probably about an inch thick overall at its uh, thickest point. Uh, a little, actually a little over an inch because this thing is actually designed to fit on our one inch and three quarter inch rods. And that makes it quite versatile. Uh, to use it on a three quarter inch rod, what you're gonna have to do is actually use what we call this little ferrule piece right here, this one inch tube ferrule. And that will go inside of this, uh, in, inside of the four in one paddle in which case you will insert one of these three quarter inch rods in there. And of course, once it's all glued together, then we can use this supplied stainless steel screw and nut. And that will create a rather strong bond. It makes that thing where it's not gonna be coming off on you. And there's a few techniques to make sure you do all this stuff correctly. And we're gonna get into that in just a little while. Uh, first off, let's, let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and go over adhesives. Now the best adhesive to use here that we've seen that's just ubiquitous and you can find it at just about any hardware store is uh, JB Weld two-part epoxy. It comes in a little blister pack. Uh, it's actually, a, it's called the original cold weld formula. Of course you got the hardener there in the red and the steel there portion in the black. Now they come out of the tubes gray and black. Um, or excuse me, white and black, and when you mix them together, they become gray. Now, the, it, once it's fully gray, it's ready to use, and the great thing about JB Weld is that it sets up very quickly. Now, it has a cure window of probably about 24 hours, so you need to leave it alone, leave your work alone, for about 24 hours, and then you should be ready to use it, because that JB Weld stuff sets up very quickly. 
Uh, we've also got one of the, I mean, one of the best things to use, and this is only if you have the time to do it, and that's going to be 3M5200. It has an extremely long setup time and a very long cure time. We're talking a couple of days setup time, so you can actually go in and re and move maneuver stuff around if you don't like how it's sitting within two days or so before it actually starts to set up. And this stuff takes over a week to cure. Now you're gonna need you're basically gonna need to leave this sitting in a room by itself for a, at least a week in order for it to set up. But once that stuff does set up, you will never get it apart ever again. The only way to get that thing stuff apart is to is to blast or however you, however else you choose or grind it down or something because you're not going to be getting it apart any other way. You're not going to be able to pull that off, that's for sure. Um, adhesives not to use really. Uh, do not use PVC glue. PVC glue will not work. It works by chemically altering or chemically melting actually the two pieces of PVC and it bonds them together that way. Well, uh, it won't melt fiberglass, so it won't do a darn thing. Uh, wood glue, do not use wood glue. It does not bond to fiberglass at all, and you'll basically, even in, after days of it setting up on there, you'll just be able to wipe it off with a towel. It's pretty much worthless. Um, epoxies that are sold in the little syringe type tubes, uh, these are basically two tubes that are bonded next to each other that have the epoxy together like that. And the reason is because it doesn't mix very well. And we found that customers have gotten back, through customer feedback, we have found that uh, they have found that that does not work very well. By far the best type is the two part epoxies that you hand mix here. Um, also, do not use glues that expand. Uh, some customers have reported that they have used Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue is uh, an expanding type, so once it starts to set up, it will expand and be rather very rigid. So you just got to be careful, and uh, we just recommend not using Gorilla Glue. Just go ahead with the JBL two-part epoxy. It's just by far the quickest, easiest to work with way to get it done. Preparation of the surface. Now, some guys, what they'll want to do is treat it like they would uh, lots of other types of surfaces that you're used to working with. Uh, you don't want to, to prep this surface with any sort of alcohol-based cleaner. Uh, what you want to do, if you, if you need to do anything, say you have some surface dust or, or something like that, or, uh, or you have sanded it in some way, just take yourself a damp rag, give it a good wipe down to get the surface dust off. Uh, on some rods, however, you know, a lot of guys will use our components with, uh, with other rods. What they want to do is uh, our, our rods are designed to fit our couplers. The rod itself is slightly undersized. Now it's not true three quarter, it's just slightly undersized. So, which means these are slightly undersized as well as long, along with our tips. Now if you want to use it on uh, a different rod, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sand at least that much, that far down, uh, to get those few thousands off of there all the way around in order for this to fit on your rod. So if uh, if you had purchased a piece of a three quarter inch tip and you're saying, oh, it, it's not it's not fitting on there, well, you may need to do some you may need to do some sanding. Also, in the production process, fiberglass uh, itself is set up as, with a catalyst, so it, it it expands and contracts. Now, in or in that particular process, some of the thousands can actually be some rods can actually be a little bit larger in diameter, so you still may need to do even a little bit of sanding, even with our rods. But most, in most all cases, you should just be able to slip it right down on there. That was actually a pretty tight one there. So uh, that'll work really nicely, actually, especially when you get that, uh, once you get the adhesive, once we get that adhesive on there, that'll work really nice. Now, actually, when you go to sand, if you go to sand this, you're going to want to sand it outside on a windy day. You do not want to breathe in any of the inert dust that's going to be created from this. Just uh, you just don't want to have you just don't want to be breathing in uh, any fiberglass resin or uh, fiberglass fiber dust. It's just gonna it's it's very it's it's totally inert once it's all set up and cured in the, like in in this type of form. So just be careful like that. Just do it uh, outside on a windy day. Make sure you wear a mask, and uh, if, you, if you need to go ahead and do that, you can also use a belt sander, um, any or any sanding any sanding drum or anything like that, just to get those few thousands off around there. 
and uh, just about that far all the way down, probably about an inch or so. Uh, now we're going to actually jump into the assembly. Now first, what we got to do is check your parts list. Now the typical parts list is going to be our uh, go all out type anchor. Now that allows you to get to a total of 14 feet of usable anchor. Now what that ends up needing is we have an eight foot piece of fiberglass rod, a four foot, a two footer, a six inch piece, a T-grip. We're gonna have at least three sets of the colors. You're gonna have three males, you're gonna have three females, and you're gonna have one tip. And uh, a lot of guys will actually opt for a four foot or two foot piece of rod and one extra rod uh, female coupler and to, to be able to use the four in one paddle. Now in order to use that, uh, you have to have, you have to make sure that the bottom sections, the bottom sections you use always have the female couplers on them. So the top sections of the, of the pole always have a male. So you're gonna have a six inch piece of, of rod with these two sections on it. So you're gonna have the T-grip, as well as the male rod coupler with a six inch piece. So that way that makes your handle fully modular and you'll have an eight foot piece that will have your modular handle on there. You can unscrew that modular handle off of there and screw in a two foot section or a four foot section, depending on if you want a 10 foot anchor that, that, you know, this particular time, or you want a 12 foot anchor this particular time, or you can include all of them for a nice 14 foot anchor. So what you gotta do is you're gonna wanna come up with some piece of cardboard, a piece of uh, heck, a uh, paper plate, anything like of, of that nature will work just fine. Paper plate, plastic plate, and you're gonna want to unscrew the, the lids here, and you're gonna wanna puncture them with the little cap puncture right there at the end of the, you just take this, puncture that, and it'll be good to go. I've already been using these a little bit here. Let's get these started. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze out enough you don't want to use it all because you probably won't use it all at one time. Go ahead and close that back and then we're going to make about an equal dab here of the black. Okay, close that off real quick. Alright, now we're going to need something in order to mix that together. I'm just going to use an extra piece of cardboard that I had laying around, so I'm just going to swish this together, and you'll see it start to go from white and black to a nice uh, deep gray here. grab one of these rods here. Now in most cases this is going to be an eight foot rod. We're going to do we're going to work our way from the bottom of the anchor to the top of the anchor. So I'm going to get my rod my rod my eight foot rod end and my three quarter inch tip. So what we're going to do is just grab a little bit and we're going to put long enough strips that you can reach to the end of this. And we're gonna apply it in strips on here. So one, two. I'm getting a little more because I ran out on the little pole here from a little app applicator here. So, and three. So see, I've got three strips on here. Eh, close, close enough to equal distance apart. Why not? And uh, you see how I have these areas here that don't have adhesive on them. Well, what that's for is our, the tolerance levels between our rod and our components here is very, very close. Now you're gonna need room for the air to escape from the end of this or else it's just gonna wanna push itself back off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this on here. 
All right, it's applied. Now you see I still have areas that maintained its uh, the, the spacing in there, so the, the air was able to escape out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to rotate this a couple of turns in both directions, not full turns, but just maybe quarter turns in both directions, just to smear it around real good. Now, I'm gonna take my finger, I'm just gonna wipe off the excess and just wipe it down on something. You know, towel, the paper plate you're working on, whatever you might have on hand, whatever you're using, it all works the same. Nothing special about it. I'm gonna wipe this off here. Okay. Gonna to want to wipe off the excess because once it sets up, it's gonna you're gonna have those little bulbous spots sticking out there, and you're just not gonna want that down. You know when you try to anchor that anchor into you know a rocky bed or something like that, you're gonna end up having some way to get caught on. You don't want that. So what we're gonna do is just keep this keep cleaning this off till it's nice and clean for you. All right. Well, that's a stainless stainless steel tip. The next end of this eight foot piece. What we're going to want to do is actually put on a three-quarter inch female because the bottom sections of the of the rod always get the female rod couplers. All right, so I'm going to grab this piece right here, and I'm going to do the same. Now this right here, the threads are about an inch deep here, so what we're going to do is apply enough to get to about right here, so let's put that together. All right, so the rod, it'll, it'll sit about that far on the rod, so we'll just get that together here. Now while I'm doing this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply this stuff on here the exact same way I did before. You know, three equal strips, three equal equidistant strips around, around it here. All right, here we go. One. Of course, I mean, you can even apply this stuff with a toothpick if you want. So, you can literally use just about anything to apply it with. You, you know, flat blade screwdriver if you want to make sure you clean it off every time. Whatever you want to use. Let's go and get this set up here. All right. We got that going. Now we're going to grab our female rod coupler. Let's get that on there. Just push it on. All right. If you if you didn't have those little pockets in there, where the air could escape from in here, what this would end up doing once you get it down there, you'll notice that this starts to that this thing actually tries to come off a little bit because of the uh, air the, the pressure you have made in there. So you got to make sure you have these air pockets in there. Now that we have it down, seated. I'm going to give it a quarter turn, a couple of quarter turns in both directions just to smear it around in there real good. All right. All right, with that done, I'm going to wipe off the excess again here. We've got a female rod coupler on one end. See the female rod coupler there at the end of this eight foot piece. I'm gonna flip this around. And we've got our stainless steel tip. Go ahead and skip ahead actually to our T-grip section. So the T-grip section goes on a piece of six inch rod with a male coupler on the other end. We're gonna apply this in the exact same way we did before. All right, now the, the throat of that male coupler is actually the exact, the exact same distance in the female coupler. So what we're, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply this exactly the same as we did before. You'll notice this is pretty, this, this is pretty much the same across all components of uh, installing this stuff. Just takes a few minutes to get everything applied to it. And once it is applied, you just sit and wait for it to set up for you. All right, 
So make sure you're using the correct, you're grabbing the correct components here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually put my uh, male coupler on first. Then we're gonna give it a turn that way and a turn to the right and a turn back to the left. Give it another turn to the right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wipe around down my finger like this. All right. Continuing on with our cleanup. Okay, that's done there. Now we're going to go to the other side. And on this side, you know, you'll see how far the actual T-grip goes on there. Now, T-grip goes a lot further. Now we're probably looking at about an inch and a half worth of uh, worth of area to cover here. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a little bit more on there and I'll build a bit longer strips. Alright, so as you can see, this JB wheel is actually starting to set up on me a little bit. It's already starting to set up on while it's sitting right here because I've mixed it already. So you gotta, you gotta work kind of quick. All right, there's one strip, and then I'll pick up some more here. Here's another strip. And you'll see there I had a, uh, a white streak there. So I'm just gonna move it around a little bit there and try to get that uh, to mix with the black stuff. And then that way it'll turn the the gray color that we're looking for to make sure that it's setting up, it's gonna set up properly. All right, and I'm gonna turn that. So I'm, I'm putting it on, uh, putting three nice thick strips on there. All right, I've got nice thick strips going down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slap this on there, just like this. Okay. We're gonna rotate that quarter turn each way here. That's nice and set. Nice and seated there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this guy around my finger and take off the excess. Wipe it on our napkin, paper towel, what have you. All right. Well, there's a good looking T-grip piece all set up. Now, go ahead and pilot hole drill this right here with at least a, maybe a 330 seconds drill bit. I wouldn't go any bigger than probably eighth of an inch drill bit. And then you can get a, a good small diameter stainless steel screw or uh, heck, you could just even use a rivet through there. You could even use a very small epoxy coated screw. In most 99.9% .9 of cases, uh, the glue and the adhesive is all you're going to need. All right, now we're going to actually work on an extension piece. Now, an extension piece actually uses a male coupler and a female coupler. And a two foot, four foot, if you want, we can cut a piece down for you. So we're probably gonna install the, uh, the male coupler first. We'll set that uh, female coupler aside there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this all set up and taken care of, and we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. If you get a little bit of, this, of the adhesive on the top, it, that's not really a big deal. Just make sure you still have these, uh, these side ports in order for the air to escape through. Okay, here we go. Push this on here. All right. 
Now we have that good and seated. We're gonna give it a twist. I'm gonna give it a twist to the left and a twist to the right. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our cleanup. got a nice clean setup there. Now we're gonna flip this around and we're gonna do the same thing with a female couple like we did before. All right, we've got the ports there to let the air escape. So we're gonna just push this guy down on there like that. Okay, that's fully seated. Now we're gonna give it a twist to the left and a twist back to the right. And again, about a quarter turn each way. And what we're gonna do is clean this guy off just like we did the other. So that is a uh, the full installation of a, we've got the male end on this end over here, and we've got the female end over here. So we've got a full functioning four foot extension pole for our shallow water anchors. So you just saw how to install the top, bottom, and middle sections of the shallow water anchor system. I'm going to show you here how to install our four in one paddle on to a piece of three quarter inch solid rod. This particular paddle is designed to fit onto one inch diameter solid rod and three quarter inch outer diameter solid rod. And now what we're gonna to do today is show you how to install it on a piece of three quarter inch solid rod. Now, as far as color is concerned, it doesn't matter which color three quarter rod you install it on as long as it's three quarter inch outer diameter. There's a few steps to follow. What we're going to do is we're going to take our paddle here and the included one inch outer diameter, three quarter inch inner diameter ferrule. Now this is going to be seated all the way into here. So what we got to do is we got to get that totally filled with adhesive. So we're going to probably need a good bit amount of adhesive in order to fulfill that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our adhesive and what we're going to use here is a two part epoxy JB weld. Okay, we've got that nice and mixed. We've got a nice gray, gray tone there going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ferrule piece. And on the ferrule, since it's got a nice big hole there for any air to escape, we're just gonna apply it pretty liberally, pretty much all over. It doesn't have to be too thick. Just make sure it's applied well. This is one of those circumstances where it is more the merrier, so, you know, apply away. You're, of course, you're probably going to end up having a bunch of a excess here, so, because this is a little over nine inch piece of tube here that we got to get uh, fully seated in there since we're putting it on a piece of three quarter inch, three quarter inch rod, so just go to town with it. Don't be shy with it. Now I'm not doing I'm not not doing the end there for any particular reason. It's just in case I ever, if I need to grab it or anything. I just don't get it all over my hands. We 
got a heck of a lot on here, so I'm going to start smearing it down the, down the tube itself. If I go putting this all in there just like it's, I have it seated here, it's probably just end up gushing out the end. And this way I can, I don't have to use quite so much of it because I mean I'm, I'm getting a pretty good spread here so I don't need to go too crazy with it. Just get yourself a good bead going all the way around. Good smear. Doesn't have to be, you know, you can have little lines like that in it because uh, once we go, once we go twisting this, it'll smear itself around. So I'm using pretty much all that I just squeezed out there, so we're going to have to squeeze out more when we when we get to the uh, putting the rod piece in there. And again, you're going to want to use a good a good amount of this stuff because this is a pretty high stress point. So you're going to want to make sure it's nice and bonded. Here we go. Now that's nice and smeared all the way around. And we're gonna go ahead and insert this into our paddle. Alright. So while I'm doing this, I'm just gonna go ahead and insert it while spinning it, going all the way around. I'm just gonna keep twisting it while I'm inserting. Now, this tube is shorter than the actual area it has to travel into, so it's going to sit about that far inside. Now you see how much is extra. That's not a whole lot for how much I, I used in there, because it, it, it did end up needing a good amount in order to uh, you know, fully seat. And that way I, I was smearing it around all the way down. So this thing actually seats in there pretty darn far. It actually seats all the way down to this little area here. It seats all the way down to about here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to clean this up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this off. So there we are. I went ahead and wiped the extra off the outside of that. Now it's nice and good looking. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that aside for just a moment. And we're gonna we're gonna smear a whole lot more on here. Now inside here, inside the actual paddle itself, there is a three-quarter inch indention down here. So we have an area for the one inch to seat, which is about ends about right here, and then there's an, an, an additional indention down there for the piece of three-quarter inch rod to always sit immediately centered. So this thing will not be cocked to one side or up and down in any way. It's going to sit all the way centered down in here, which is uh, the reason why that was designed it that way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get some more of our adhesive. I'm going to squirt out as much as I've got left here of the black stuff. So that's the steel there. And uh, you can see I was able to do ab about the, uh, I was able to do the, probably the entirety of, an, of, an, of one entire shallow water anchor kit. Now that's including uh, two or three extent, or two extension pieces, a bottom section and a top section with uh, one set of the blister pack. So if you get a, a pair of anchors or more, just, you know, just get, go ahead and get the extra bit. Go ahead and get an extra pack, just to be on the safe side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and smear this on here like this. Again, it's a 50-50 epoxy. 
So you want about 50% white stuff and 50% black stuff. So we got 50% hardener and 50% steel. Okay. I'm going to seal this one back up. And I pretty much exhausted my... Uh, my steel here. I'm almost completely out of the hardener, so I, did, I didn't do the full 50-50 apparently at some point, so uh, make sure you do that if you want, if you want to make sure you get full use out of both, which I'm sure you probably would want to. I'm going to wipe my fingers off there just to be on the safe side. Okay. Now, what we got to do first is actually mix this stuff back together. Okay, so what we have to do is cover more than nine inches of surface area. So this actually sits all the way down to this little bubble portion on the four-in-one paddle, as you can see right there. There's actually an indented part in there, so this thing will all, this three-quarter inch rod, even though this is a uh, larger diameter interior of one inch, we have a little uh, a little nipple down in there where this actually is three quarter inch rod will seat just slightly further than the one inch, so it always seats centered, which is a nice feature we were able to get engineered into it, which is great. So let's go ahead and get this stuff smeared on this piece of three quarter rod. So I'm just going to apply it pretty darn liberally in here. Now again, what you're going to want to do is apply this in long strips. And you're going to want to allow a little, a little strip of area so you can uh, allow the air to get out of the end of this. Because there is not an anywhere that air is going to be able to escape otherwise. So apply it in long strips. You can do... Uh, three equal strips all the way around like uh, like we do on the all the small components which includes the tips the t-grips all the uh, the rod couplers or you can do this on you can you know apply this fully on half of the rod and just make sure you have a couple of strips of totally un unobstructed rod all the way down. And don't make them real narrow strips either. Make them nice and, and large, because once you go putting that, this rod in there, it's gonna wanna smear around and, ex and uh, encroach on those non-adhesive uh, laced portions. So just be careful with it and we'll show you all that. All right, so we're getting that nice and smeared on there. All right, so now I've still got, I've got a good portion here of totally unsmeared area. So I'm gonna make it a little bit closer than that, but not much. See, it's starting to, starting to come together here. Just wanna be careful with it. Wanna make sure you got enough enough on here so that it bonds but you don't want to use too much or else you won't have area for the uh, air to escape and if the air doesn't escape it's not going to seat very well so just pay attention to that when you're uh, when you're applying the when you're applying the adhesive on there So this time I'm actually going to end up having uh, one area of complete, totally un, uh, not non-adhesive area here for the air to escape. Getting as much on here that I can. And this is just to sh illustrate that uh, you definitely want to have at least one, maybe two areas of area that has no adhesive all as a strip all the way down it all right here we go what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna wipe my hand off here so I don't get 
adhesive all over my paddle here. But I sure like I like all my stuff to look real nice. All right, because it's gonna function nice and it looks real nice. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna put this in here and we're gonna, we're not gonna we're not gonna turn this as we put it in there. We're just gonna sleeve it in there, nice and slow. And you see that nice bead that's coming out. That's gonna be that's gonna come in handy real quick. So we're gonna seat that all the way in there. Now, now that it's seated, I'm gonna give this some some turns. Probably about half turns. Left, right, left, right. And I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn this while I do that. Left, right, left, right. Turn the whole assembly. Left, right, left, right. Alright, now we've got this nice little fillet in here full of this nice bead of glue that we still have left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go around this real nice and easy here with my finger. Flick that, the rest of that off of there like that. All right, I'm gonna set this down over here. And I'm gonna wipe my finger off here on this uh, damp paper towel that I've got at the ready. And if you have any extra on you, you can go ahead and, at this time, go ahead and get it off of you. But that, that is a fully adhered to piece of three quarter rod on four and one paddle. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and show you how to use the stainless steel supplied bolt. So we're gonna go ahead and move our adhesive out of the way. And we're gonna grab our, oh, look at that. See, this is why we tidy ourselves up because you can end up, you know, smearing this stuff around real easily. So try to keep a tidy workspace. Let me go ahead and get this stuff off of me. And see, if you don't want this type of stuff all over your work, your work area, just put down some newspaper or something like that so you don't get it all over the place. But anywho, we're gonna go ahead and uh, separate the the screw and the uh, self-locking nut there. And we're just gonna set those aside for now. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use a small diameter bit first. A, a small diameter bit in our drill. And I believe today I'm, I'm using a 3 30 seconds drill bit. Because we're gonna go ahead and drill this hole right here. Try to center it as best you can. And you're gonna drill straight down. Okay. So I'm just setting that aside for the time being. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get me out a larger drill bit. Now the one to use is actually 5 30 seconds in order to use this, this provided stainless uh, hardware. All right, so we're gonna put that on drill and we're gonna go ahead and drill out that hole slightly larger. There we go. All right. So now we're just gonna swipe that aside. And now we've got a nice hole that's drilled through there. We're gonna take our provided stainless screw. And it's actually on the tight side, so this is actually better. So it doesn't slop, we don't have any slop situations. So we're gonna go ahead and just we're literally just gonna screw this all the way through. Once we have that fully screwed in, what we're gonna do is go ahead and take our nut. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on the end of that screw. Okay, grab it with a pair of pliers. Grab that nut back in the back with a pair of pliers there. And we're gonna tighten it down. 
just like you would any other screw or any other bolt and nut combination. Make sure you grab it real tight. You can even start twisting with just the uh, the nut itself. Just get it seated down there, real nice and tight. Don't you need don't, don't need to super over tighten it. Just make sure it's making contact. That's all you pretty much all you really need to do. All right. So that's fully seated on there. We had a little bit of leakage of the actual adhesive in there when we uh, when we drilled the hole. So what you can do now that you've got that fully seated in there, you can come back with a uh, with a towel, with a damp towel, and wipe all that excess off. Wipe the excess off right here as well. And uh, when you go to set it up, you, when you let this thing set up, let it set up with the uh, paddle end down and this uh, leaning up against a a wall or a door or something like that that uh, doesn't get disturbed. All right, and that's how you install your four-in-one paddle onto the end of a three-quarter inch diameter rod. Thanks for watching.